very, very good flipper from Shane Warne. That went zip. And Shane Warne has taken another five wickets in an innings. And Warne has got him. Well, Dolphy it straight back to him. There's his fifth wicket in the innings. That's uh, Shane Warne's best bowling in Test cricket. You can deny Warne anything because he's bowled brilliantly. And it was through him, it was sword, it was candy from kids. Beautifully bold. Ah! Oh, and there's another one. Superb bowling by Shane Warne. The flipper is a lethal weapon here for him to the ground. He certainly was enjoying the battle, Shane Warne, and he's won it. Run him. That was a magnificent delivery. That's 150 test wickets for Shane Warne. Just when leg spin seemed to have died, Shane Warne arrived and ignited it again. He's bought back cricket's soul, and he's a product of the Australian Cricket Academy. He was a young beach bum, a boy who didn't turn his arm at leg spin until very early in his career. But he's special, and we were lucky enough to catch up with him at the Sydney Cricket Ground. What I'm really interested in is how it all begun. Were you a leg break voter as a boy? Uh, I suppose as a kid I was more of a batsman. I, I rated myself pretty good as a batter, and then I, even when I went to play uh, what we call district cricket, which is club cricket here, I was more of a batsman, and I didn't really bowl much until I got into the first, and... I saw the reason I got in the first was a bowler who could bat a bit, so I batted in the middle and just bowled a bit, but not much. And uh, I suppose that now I'm just very happy that I stuck with it, I'm stuck with bowling leg spin. I was about to say they gave you a bit of a rap as a top-level beach bum in the early <laughs> days, um, a boy that carried a bit of weight, liked the good life. How is it that this fellow that began on the beach has turned himself into one of the greatest bowlers at the game seen, really? I suppose it's um, a fair bit of hard work. I've had it the last two or three years. I've really worked hard on my fitness. Uh, I've really worked hard on uh, different styles of my uh, leg breaks, which have been a lot of different ways talk, talking to Richie Benno, Bob Simpson, Jim Higgs, uh, a lot with Terry Jenner, uh, all these guys and just talking with them and getting something off all of them and then sitting down and thinking about what's best for me. I think it's like any bowler or batsman that if you get advice off somebody, if it doesn't work for you, don't use it. If it does work for you, then fantastic. Beautiful piece of work by Healy. That's fine bowling by young Shane Warren. Warren won't mind if he comes down and hits him over the top. Oh, Carl. In the air, gone. Caught it short extra. Shane Warren again, bowling his leg spinners. And straight to slip. That's the end of him. As the West Indies are on the ropes. That could be the end of the test match. Seven wickets for Shane Warne. The real turning point for Warne was when he got seven for 52 against the West Indies at the MCG. Indeed, he had an inauspicious start a year earlier with one for 152 against India. And a tubby, slightly uncommitted boy. He didn't seem to be going anywhere. I don't think I bowled that badly in the first test here. I hadn't played enough cricket or I hadn't uh, had enough experience under my belt that I could fall back on. Uh, I don't even think I played six or seven first-class games up to that stage. Well hit. When you bowl a bad ball, it goes for six. I've been through a few ups and downs in my short time. Uh, I've been dropped, I know, three or four times, I suppose. Uh, a few of the English guys have been dropped a few more times than that, but uh, that's just something I think it's made me a better player today. First ball, he's bowled him. Gutting can't believe it. I don't know what effect it's had on England, but it has changed Shane Warne's life. Simple as that. Um, his profile from that time on has gone through the roof so I guess that has had a, a tremendous impact on his life whether he, that confidence he's taken from that has, uh, has allowed him to bowl brilliantly to the English I'm not sure I can't really comment on what sort of an effect it had on the Poms but at this stage he's, he's on top I was very nervous before the first test after being in England two or three times and watching the guys play um, it was hard to sort of understand that I was about to play a test match in England like you always dream of and then to do that first ball was uh, was pretty good. It made me feel. I've I reckon I've watched, watched it about 800 times too, just quietly. <laughs> I don't blame you. There's always a feeling of anticipation when Warren is bowling to Cullinan. When will the flipper come? Beautiful delivery, a leg break. Big shout, and he's gone. Warren coming on at the Randwick end, and he didn't wait long. That looked to me to be the one Warren shows them. You could almost pick that from up here. Flipper, and he's got him again with it. 
So uh, he's pulled one for four, but missed the second one. And I think you can guarantee that Shane Warne has outfought him there. I do try and work on things. I do experiment in the nets about uh, a lot of different things. Uh, Jim Higgs, Jack Potter, who was the original coach of the academy, Terry Jenner, uh, have all shown me different ways of bowling flippers. And they used to bowl with their fingers. Some used to bowl like that. Um, and they used to bowl all different sorts of ways. And I suppose I've got a mixture of all of them into my own one that, it, that felt comfortable with me to bowl. Uh, I practiced it for two or three years over at the academy before I played test cricket. Uh, and now I suppose I'm landing uh, seven out of ten, I suppose, or or three out of five, something like that. I'm landing uh, every every now and then. One will fly down like so. I'll be I bowled Thorpe a couple of full tosses about here somewhere, which yeah. didn't mean to, but that's just what happens. So. Can you show us the angle of your hand with the flipper, the exact position? We well, generally try and get it about the leg spin. Like you want your leggies about there, I suppose. You have your palm of your hand facing that way for a, a leggy, uh, top spinner, wrong and and your flipper's somewhere in between there, I suppose. Oh, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't really studied it, but. I suppose it's somewhere about there, which is very similar to your leg break. And it's meant to look a bit shorter, which uh, if, if viewers are watching, you saw Alex Stewart, he went back to try and pull it, then he went to cut it, and good evening. But uh, the thing, if you land it in the right spot, it is, even if you might pick it, if you land it in the right spot, you still got to play it. And sometimes it happens so quickly that if you land it in exactly the right spot on a good length, that sometimes you can still knock a bloke over even if he picks it. I haven't played against a lot of leg spinners, but he's by far the best leg spinner I've played against. Others I've played against in the past bowl good deliveries, have variation, but also bowl a bad ball. Um, against Shane Bourne, you can try and pick the delivery, see which way the ball is going to spin, uh, then it's a question of playing the right or the correct shot against him. Um, it's no point just blocking him the whole time, you've got to try and score off him. If the bad ball doesn't come, it makes it very, very difficult. That is a very good catch. He certainly spins the ball further than any leg spinner I've seen or kept be to before. And, and that, with the control that he combines that with, it, it's difficult to score from. I don't think he'd be a bowler you'd look to attack or dominate whatsoever. Um, that any champion bowler, you don't look to score runs at four or five and over off ever. Was that a go at that one? And that's going to be over the top. Is there anybody in inside that you admire or think poses you problems? I admire Graham Goosh. I think he's a type of guy that really does give his all. Um, I, th I also think Darren Goff's a great, great player for you. I think he could be a very good player for you guys over, over a few years. And uh, he's a bit of a character, you know. Like, you don't want to be uh, too robotish and mope around the field or walk around and just, you know, the crowds are here to see some good cricket and they want to see some exciting stuff. They want to see guys being themselves and. Uh, Whatever, and I think oh, I think I'm sort of uh, let myself go in front of a big crowd. I enjoy myself. I think Goffey's the same, and it's uh, I reckon it's good for England. I would like to play county cricket one day. Uh, I wanted to play last year, but I've been not going to do that. I might get myself in trouble. But uh, uh, I think I definitely want to play after the World Cup. Uh, I think February '96 the World Cup. So uh, England summer of '96. I think I'd like to play county cricket if uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some county over there. Now you've cleaned up the act a bit. There was a time when you looked as if you might be a bit of an angry young man. It has to be said these days you're outstanding with the press. I think that a high percentage of the interviews that you give are not just well given, but they're very interesting too. You made a big change to produce a better image for yourself. I've always sort of, uh, I've only had one incident in South Africa, which um, I don't really want to talk about too much, but there's a lot of things that people didn't really understand what was happening over there that I had uh, probably between 30 and 40 people every night coming and knocking on my door up until between I suppose I get back from dinner about 10.30 until 3 or 4 in the morning and when you're trying to play a test match it does sort of get a bit annoying uh, you can tell security guards and they still manage to sneak in somehow you get out of the door in the morning and there's 30 or 40 people wanting your autograph you don't want to feel like a, a real bad guy not signing for some poor kid so then you got to try and get on the bus and get to the ground you want to prepare yourself for a game so I just let a lot of things get to me and build up and build up and unfortunately I just, I just snapped and that was just one of those things that happened but uh, I think uh, I've learnt now just from more experience with the media and people and how to deal with people and I'm slowly getting better at it. What about these Shane Warne hands? Any calluses from spinning the ball? No, no, I'm very lucky. With it. I've got a little bit of a callus just here. Uh, not much. My main concern is my shoulder. I've had a few problems with my shoulder. Um, that's just from, I suppose, overuse and in such a short period of time in the last two or three years that I've bowled on it. Someone told me statistics, I'm not big on statistics, but I've bowled a hell of a lot of overs in the last few years and I suppose it's just a bit of wear and tear. Shane, to get away from the game a second, relaxation, 
Do you still enjoy the beat? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't get a chance to surf or do anything like that. So I was never, as a kid, I used to surf a little bit, but not much. And I, it was something I liked doing, but I never really had the chance to do a lot of it. But I like the beach, just being in the water and just lying there and doing absolutely nothing. Yes! Oh, he's got him! He's got him! It's a trick! Shane, eight for a hat trick. Everything's happening to you. What is there left? What are your immediate future ambitions? I was going to say what's happened to your batting. It's a dying thing, your batting. I know. I've gone downhill since I started. Most of the time. I know. 